everybody. My name is Vincent Webb, and I'm with North Carolina Farm Food Extension. I am one of your fellow consumer sciences leaders who focuses on foods and nutrition, and I have my friends here with me today from Second Harvest. I'm Connor Miller. I'm a nutrition educator with Second Harvest. And I'm Eli Sabedro, uh, nutrition educator with Second Harvest. All right. Um, so now that we have everybody introduced, we actually decided to come together and partner and show you how to can and preserve apple butter. One of the easiest recipes that we've shown people on both sides, uh, uh, us, Corporate Extension, and Second Harvest. And now we're here to show you not just how to prepare, but also how to preserve. So for this recipe, we're gonna need about four pounds of apples, one cup of apple cider, and one cup of apple cider vinegar, one and one eighth cup of sugar and one and one eighth cup of powdered brown sugar. And to add a little bit of flavor to the apple butter, we've got one tablespoon of ground cinnamon and then half a tablespoon of ground cloves. Okay, so we're ready to get started. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our apples have been washed. So these apples have already been washed. So we're ready to remove the core, peel them, slice them, and remove the stems. Apples are great because they're a simple, delicious snack that you can have uh, throughout the year. They're rich in antioxidants, rich in vitamin C, and they're high in fiber, so that makes it an amazing, delicious fruit uh, for you and your family. And the great thing about making this recipe is that we're using four pounds of apples, so it's really easy to just buy your apples in bulk and either use all of them for the recipe or use half of your bulk apples to make apple butter and then save the rest to snack on for lunch, breakfast, or use them in other recipes. And one of the great benefits of buying produce in bulk when you can is that it helps you save money. Um, so bulk items, when they come in the big three pound, five pound bags, will be cheaper than when you buy them individually and bag them yourself. Another great way that helps you save money on apples is that right now it's fall and it's apple season here in North Carolina. And when you eat seasonally and shop seasonally, you will save money that way as well. And a lot of times the local grocery stores around here will advertise when they have North Carolina grown produce. And we're seeing that a lot right now in the grocery store with our apples. And they'll often be on sale because there's just so much abundance of that fruit. Okay, so grab your peeler and your apple and we're ready to start uh, peeling. And peeling the apple helps just give the apple butter a smoother texture. So Connor's gonna slice our apples for us. And we just wanna cut the apple up. You're gonna remove your core and then either quarter or eighth the apples just so they're in little small pieces. All right, now that we have peeled, cored, and chopped up our apples, we have introduced them into the pot and we actually use the blender. You can use a colander or a sieve or a uh, food mill in order to grind them up to a chunky consistency and allow them to break down. Um, but we actually use a blender. Uh, right now, we have all the ingredients right here and Connor's just gonna simply pass and I'm gonna dump. That's our apple cider vinegar mixture. Yep. There. Sugar and brown sugar. Stir it up, stir the pot a little bit. In this case, it is a good thing to stir the pot. <laughs> All right. Everybody see what that look like? Everybody see? Everybody see? Yeah, so the consistency is like a little bit chunkier than applesauce right now, which will help speed up the cooking process. Yes, indeed. All right, Connie, you ready? Spices? Cinnamon. Yep. And our cloves. All right, so we're gonna allow this to reduce. We're gonna allow it to get up to a little boil. And what we wanna do, you can do a little trick. We do it for jams and jellies too. You can take it out. When it's ready, it will actually stand up and stick onto the spoon. And it will be slow, very, very slow to drip off. 
So we kind of call that the spoon test. Now we actually have our apple butter, the finished product, we've allowed it to reduce. And remember what we were saying about the spoon test? So you want it to be a slow drip, so you can kind of see it slow. You don't want it to be a, a running drip. That's what you want, you want to allow it to reduce enough to the point where you have that. And when you get those rolling boils and you allow it to stop cooling, it gets that nice uh, flat, um, kind of like, um, it's not a stiffness, but it's almost like a peaky look to it. It's, it's, it's definitely ready. And then when you put it in, a, you can even put it in the fridge when it comes out hot, you want to speed up the process, put a little bit in a bowl, put it in the fridge, allow it to cool, and you'll get that, that slow drip. And that's what you want. Um, or you'll just have applesauce. And there's nothing wrong with applesauce, but you want the butter, the buttery consistency. You want that thick consistency. Uh, so that's, that's what you got. So we can actually start funneling this into jars. Eli, we're gonna have you go ahead and, and ladle the ingredients in the jar. So go ahead. And what we wanna do, we wanna do it until we can get to uh, quarter inch head space we're looking for. A lot of that is, uh, with that head space, we have a lot of uh, jams, jellies, and, and spreads, fruit spreads that rest in that type of head space. So Eli, um, go ahead and you see the graduations here? Go yes. ahead and check. Um, and yep, just like that, so you're not quite there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might have to use a little spoon. Um, Kind of make sure you can need that out. Just move it out there. and just go down in the jar and use that small tip in. Yep, and just burst those bubbles. Surround the jar and there it is. Okay, just use this to wipe the rim of the jar. So now you'll be ready to put your, um, make sure there's no residue, or we won't get the seal that we need. Now Eli is ready to put his lid on. And bam. And this one is ready to go in the canner. Now when we have all of these done, we'll show you our canner with the rolling boil and then we'll be ready to go to process. All right, now that we have our canner uh, back here, we have the rack, and it, it, it has actually come up to a rolling boil, and we are good to go to introduce our jars. So the water needs to be a couple inches above. Um, after introducing the jars in, it should cover at least uh, two, maybe three inches above the jaws, the top of the jaws. So now we'll lower them down. And if you're worried about the jars kind of moving around, tilting, anything like that, you can always take a uh, empty jar, a couple empty jars and put them in. Yo, we are good to go. Um, and we'll put this on. And it's already at a rolling boil pretty much. So, We'll go ahead and process for, I believe for this one is uh, five minutes. All right, everybody, five minutes has passed. Now we are ready to take our lid off. We have a little oil. We can just go ahead and shut this guy off. Um, I, just, I just gotta be careful when I do this, bring them up.
sometimes they don't pop as soon as they come out of the canner. There you go, and now we just have to wait 12 to 24 hours for them to properly seal.